Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to try to come up with an epsilon delta definition of the derivative. Now, what's that mean? Well, the derivative of a function f, f is a function of one variable defined at and around some point x0. So, x0 is a point in the interior of the domain. And the derivative of f at x0 is defined as a limit of a, of a what? Difference, difference quotient. quotient difference of f values over the difference of x values. But we know and uh, we remember fondly that limits, have, there's this epsilon delta definition for a limit, right? So now the natural thing to do is, in order to make this definition more explicit, is to try to use this to get an epsilon delta definition for the derivative, okay? And let's, let's try to work this out. And it's an instructive exercise trying to work out what this would say. So what is the C and the L in in here? The C is X not X not and the L is F X not. Hmm? Sorry? No. F well what what is F what is the F that we are uh well so the F here is actually this whole expression. Okay? So this F is now this whole expression, right? Yeah. Oh. And so C is x naught and L is what? What's the limit we are claiming the this to have? F prime x naught. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's why it's it's an instructive exercise. So this f is not the same as this f. It's actually this whole function. Treat this as a function. This whole thing as a function of x. Okay. So let's try to work it out. So what does it say? It says. So I'm just trying to define this. So, for what it means to say that the derivative is something. So, let me say, let me put L equals F prime X naught. So, what, so what I'm trying to say is what does it mean to say that L equals F prime X naught means what? If somebody claims that F prime X naught is L, or somebody claims that F prime of 5 is 20, or something like that, what would they need to show in a limit statement? So, what would it mean? Say that. So for every epsilon greater than zero, mm -hmm. there exists. Okay, there delta, exists. Delta greater than zero such that. Okay, let let me just finish writing that. Such that. Okay. For all x within the absolute value of x minus x naught. Squared and zero and less than delta. Okay, so instead of C, I'm putting X naught because that's the point at which you're taking the limit. Okay, what we do we have? have? This is very be careful. Yeah. I F prime X minus F prime X naught. Well, not F prime X. This, this whole thing is our F. So what we should put is here for the fx here. Yeah, are you here? Okay, yeah. So for the fx here, you should put this whole expression. Oh. Treating it just as a function of x because x naught is a no is a fixed number. Okay. Minus well, we are claiming the limit is l. So, mm -hmm. but this l is the claimed value for f prime x naught, mm -hmm. right? L is less than. Epsilon. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want, this thing you can rewrite in another way. Let's this up. Now, this is the same as saying that if you multiply both sides by mod x minus x, you take the common denominator. It's the same as saying, oh, I guess I'll, I'll run out of space here, so I'll just do it down here. fx minus fx naught minus L times X minus X naught is less than what? The uh, epsilon times the epsilon value of X minus X naught. Okay. So you instead of writing this, you could write the lower thing. So this is the epsilon delta definition of derivative. Now why did I give you an epsilon delta definition of derivative? What do you think is the purpose? Well, it's actually hard to see right now, 
But in case you are interested, this, this is actually a, a nicer definition of derivative if you use this version because it doesn't involve any division. Okay, there's no division. And so when we, when in some cases, when you try to generalize this to functions of more than one variable and you have vectors and it's not easy to divide vectors by vectors, this is actually the definition that you'll use for the derivative. But that's for later. It's just an interesting exercise we have here.